the sixth and final set the final seminar in the Birmingham uh, University of Birmingham International Wind Engineering Seminars that are jointly sponsored by the International Association of Wind Engineering. Uh, for those of you who haven't joined in the other seminars, my name's Chris Baker and I'm Emeritus Professor of Environmental Fluid Mechanics at the University of Birmingham in the United Kingdom. Today's seminar is entitled Wind Related Disaster Risk Reduction, Current Status and Future Prospects. And the main speaker who will be talking to us in a few moments is Professor Yukio Tamura. And that will be followed by two shorter presentations by Professor Masters from Florida and by myself. Could I ask please that you keep uh, your sound turned off, mute all the time and video off too, please, uh, unless I ask you to reveal yourself. That helps with bandwidth. If you have any questions for the speakers, put them. could you put them in the chat function? And um, Grace Yan in Missouri will collate those and send them to Professor Kopp at Western in Canada, who will lead the question time. Questions will all follow at the end of the three presentations. So welcome to you all. And now it's my duty to welcome our first speaker. Uh, could I ask Professor Tamura while I'm doing this to um, uh, share his screen if he wishes to? Okay. Professor Tamura is Professor in the School of Civil Engineering at Chongqing University in China and the Honorary Director of the Wind Engineering Research Center at Tokyo Polytechnic University in Japan. He served as President of the International Association for Wind Engineering for eight years from 2007 to 2015. And he's currently serving as an adjunct guest honorary professor at 19 universities in China, Korea, Malaysia, Poland, and the USA. Professor Tamura is a member of the Engineering Academy of Japan, a foreign fellow of the Indian National Academy of Engineering, and a foreign member of the Chinese <laughs> of Engineering. Uh, could I ask that people mute themselves, please? Thank you. Um, and so with that, I will hand over to Professor Tamura to deliver his presentation entitled Wind-Related Disaster Risk Reduction, Current Status and Future Prospects. Okay. May I start? Thank you. Yeah, we can hear you. you can, uh, yes, indeed. So, good evening. Uh, good afternoon and good morning, everybody. So thank you for your kind participation in this seminar. So I'm grateful to Professor Chris Baker for his kind invitation to this important seminar. So I'm very honored. Uh, so today uh, I'm very happy to talk about uh, when we really did disaster risk reduction. Uh, and I would like to share my personal opinions uh, with you and uh, wish to discuss uh, what uh, are the problems, uh, what we should do now for the future. So can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay, okay, good. Yes, so, we can, Yukio, it's fine. Okay. So first, uh, let's see the uh, extremely strong wind condition. So uh, this is a typical scene uh, during uh, typhoon, hurricane, uh, cyclone. So uh, as, uh, because of the very strong wind, uh, the strong pressure and the force act on the building and structures. And uh, they, uh, so the, the destroyed part, uh, damaged part uh, become uh, windborne debris and uh, attack the uh, downstream uh, uh, buildings and structures. And occasionally they kill uh, people also. So uh, under uh, such a uh, very uh, severe uh, situation that we should protect the uh, uh, building and also uh, human being. So, and also the tornado uh, provide a very strong wind. Uh, and in this case, uh, uh, because of the updraft component, uh, the debris uh, uh, conveyed to wide range, and so debris impact may be uh, more significant than uh, hurricane or tornado, uh, to hurricane or cyclone. Uh, and uh, it, the devastating disaster is basically caused by uh, 
uh, typhoon, uh, hurricane, uh, tropical cyclone. So, uh, but in tropical cyclone, uh, or how high the wind speed we should consider. So in this, uh, this is uh, just uh, just a Japan uh, Japanese example. Uh, we analyzed a very strong wind uh, uh, during typhoon in 2003. So wind uh, three second gust uh, ex exceeded the 90 meter per second. So even the, uh, we published a paper uh, and also the uh, even the during tropical cyclone. So we should consider very strong wind condition. But uh, this, this is a typical pressure pattern uh, acting on the low-rise building uh, based on uh, wind tunnel data. So uh, you can see the positive pressure act on the windward side and the uh, negative pressure, uh, the, the roof and the side wall and also reward wall. And uh, we should note that the majority of the surface, and in this case, more than 90% uh, uh, area uh, of the surface of the building uh, get uh, negative pressure, not the, uh, we say wind pressure. So people imagine uh, the pressurizing force, but the majority is the suction. So we should note this. Uh, the, so because of such a uh, uh, suction uh, acting on the roof, uh, so easily uh, uh, lifted up and uh, blown up to, to the, the distant uh, place. So, uh, but the, not only extremely strong wind, uh, we should uh, consider the light wind and the moderate wind, and they can cause uh, uh, the damage to, to the building. So the light uh, left figure indicates uh, the uh, wind uh, vortex resonance uh, transmission tower, the wind speed around 10 meters per second. The right figure says the beam vibration the wind speed are almost uh, six, five meter, six meter per second. So very low uh, wind uh, can cause uh, such a uh, violent uh, uh, vibration. And also, as you know, the Tacoma allows bridge uh, aerodynamic instability can happen, even the wind speed less than 20 meter per second or so forth. So, and also the daily wind, uh, we should uh, be careful and the uh, people basically misunderstand the lift force acting on the, the, the body. So uh, these people uh, probably believed that the, your, their weight is enough to press down to, to the ground, the air, air mat used for uh, athletic game, uh, but it was not correct. Uh, and uh, if the wind speed exceeded uh, 15 meter per second or 20 meter per second, so the, the lift force becomes more than one ton or two tons. So easily lifted up and the people are blown off and crashed to the ground. So only the misunderstanding can cause uh, such a uh, uh, dangerous situation. And also, uh, so the, for this, uh, we need uh, some uh, uh, education or so forth. And uh, the similar phenomena happened uh, by the light wind. So the, the, these are the air amusement good uh, bouncing houses. So uh, they are also easily uh, blown off. Uh, and uh, I had uh, in the, only the, in the US almost every week uh, some accident happened. So uh, considering the worldwide probably almost every day such a uh, dangerous situation appear and uh, the small kid uh, may injured or killed. So also we need to dissemination, uh, the dissemination of the knowledge uh, and also strict operation rules should, should be uh, followed. And next, uh, let's see the past devastating disaster, mainly caused by tropical cyclone. So cyclone Bola attacked uh, Bangladesh, uh, current Bangladesh in 1970. And uh, because of the strong wind and also uh, water hazard uh, killed many people. Uh, in this case, it is reported more than 500,000 people are killed only by one uh, cycle. So uh, we should consider the combined effects of wind and water hazard. Uh, and also hotspot of human losses uh, in developing countries, especially uh, South Asian region, uh, a huge uh, human loss uh, um, almost every uh, year happening. 
And, but even the developed country like uh, the US, uh, more than 2,005 people, people are killed. So, and also economic loss is very significant. So this is also the combined effects of wind and water hazard. And the cyclone allergies attacked Myanmar and uh, so the more than uh, almost 140,000 people are killed. So the significant human losses are still uh, continuing. Uh, of course, uh, the, 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 this is combined effects of uh, wind and water hazard. And uh, more recently, the typhoon Haiyan attacked the, the Philippines and uh, 8,000 people were killed. So, and uh, affected the area became like this. Uh, also this, this case, uh, the combined effects of wind and water hazard. So um, when we consider the combination with water hazard, not only the depth of the water, also the speed of the water should be uh, careful. Uh, even the very uh, low speed, uh, the water pressure, the very, very high uh, comparing to the wind. So um, when we uh, recommend the local government or local society, the evacuation timing, so uh, we should consider not only wind, uh, not only water, of course, uh, the both uh, combined effect uh, should be considered. And next, uh, let's review some uh, uh, past uh, damage to buildings, especially the large scale building. So uh, probably you can find some uh, uh, kind of human errors. Uh, this is the damage to the soccer stadium, uh, maybe due to thunderstorm accompanied the uh, typhoon. Uh, so the, the, the shape of the uh, structure was like this. Uh, so a uh, pointed shape. Uh, the architecture is probably beautiful, but the uh, most important uh, matter in the design and the construction of membrane structure is the uniform distribution of the tensile stress. But such an uh, pointed shape uh, invest in the external uh, wind, maybe uh, uh, ten uh, ten uh, stress uh, concentration happen. So, uh, and this uh, is the damage to the large scales uh, roofing system. So uh, two layered folded steel plate uh, uh, damaged uh, due to the high negative pressure acting on the uh, near the leading edge of the roof. So this is uh, the kind of misunderstanding of the uh, performance of the cladding. Uh, and uh, so we checked uh, all boards, including the non-damaged part, but we found that uh, the majority of the boards show such a uh, sectional uh, say, uh, image uh, I, I, so with the striation. So striation, uh, the evidence of the uh, uh, fatigue damage due to solar heating. So um, this is maybe kind of uh, before typhoon coming, it's already all boats already damaged. And this is a very ironical photo showing the non-damage to traditional uh, houses a non-engineered house, but uh, damage to only the engineered structure. So this situation may be uh, caused by uh, similar to the previous slide. Uh, so deterioration uh, of cladding and component systems. So already uh, so the damage uh, the fixing uh, part. Uh, so uh, periodic inspection are very necessary for such a uh, structure. And such a uh, stadium or so forth uh, Evacuation place. Uh, uh, the local government uh, uh, assigns such an, those building as uh, the evacuation place. So we should be careful about that. And this is the uh, damage to the membrane structure again. Uh, to keep uh, very beautiful the V-shape uh, undulation on the surface of the roof, but for for that uh, they use uh, the outer cables. So between the outer cable and the membrane, the dust accumulated. And as you know, the almost all buildings show some micro tremors. So due to the uh, vibration, the, the cable and the membrane always rub each other. Uh, so uh, the surface of temp teflon lined glass fiber membrane materials already damaged before typhoon coming. And this is a kind of uh, to analogy about the uh, aerodynamic behavior and uh, structure behavior. So single layer lattice stone, very flexible 
uh, uh, structure are uh, used for large scale uh, uh, building uh, structure uh, and open top type. Uh, so uh, structurally also very uh, flexible and uh, the that dynamic is not so good, for, especially for the windward wall. So these are kind of human error in my opinion. And the next, uh, let's see some possibility of catastrophic incidents. So this is uh, the damage to the roof cladding system, uh, but uh, this uh, debris uh, covered uh, the high-speed train railway. So it was very lucky, no train was running. So no serious uh, accident happened, but it could happen. So, um, and also the, the, the owner of this building uh, should have paid <laughs> the penalty money because it stopped the uh, high-speed train for seven hours. And uh, this is the, the really a uh, tragic accident happened due to, to wind. Uh, so a very unlucky coincidence of the spatially and temporally uh, coincident happened. Uh, so very small size uh, tornado, well, with uh, the damage area maybe uh, uh, was uh, around 30 meter wide or so forth. So, but it uh, luckily it hit uh, the fast car of the train. So fast car is the most vulnerable to win. So uh, derailment happened and five people were killed. And uh, next year, the, also the almost a similar phenomena happened in Japan. So we realized that uh, tornado often cross uh, tracks in, in Japan. So this is an example of the ship overturning and they killed uh, 442 people in China uh, due to not so strong, but the downburst uh, estimated as the downburst. So such a uh, mass transportation system uh, operation should be very careful. And also we should uh, uh, give uh, attention to the me uh, meteorological or weather condition. So next, uh, I show some kind of similar to the previous slide, uh, the uh, kind of human error or uh, included, uh, but uh, unexpected change in internal pressure caused some damage uh, or accident. So this is the, the damage to partial damage to the roofing system here, but uh, it caused a sudden decrease in internal pressure due to such a big opening uh, in roof. And then the ex uh, entrance frames were sucked into the, the building. And the one person uh, standing near the, the entrance frame uh, killed. And this is the case, uh, internal pressure de decreased, but uh, this example, the internal pressure uh, increased, uh, the pressurized. So the wind come, came from uh, right to left and uh, because of the high negative peak acting near the leading edge, uh, the roof beams are lifted up and crashed to the ground. Uh, and it was very unlucky that this building was assigned as the evacuation building in this uh, area. So many people gathered to this building uh, and uh, many fatalities were found. <clears throat> But uh, the reason seems to be a kind of mistake uh, of the structure designer. So the, there are many uh, ventilating openings. So this is kind of special features uh, of uh, uh, buildings in tropical uh, area uh, to save energy for cooling uh, the, the room. Uh, maybe this is very necessary uh, to save energy, but uh, uh, we should consider the effect of the such an uh, even small uh, the opening uh, and the aerodynamic air behavior of the structure should be uh, carefully uh, checked. Uh, and uh, this cannot be treated as uh, the closed type building. So uh, it happened like this. So some kind of uh, knowledge dissemination may be necessary or education uh, may be necessary. And uh, next, I would like to emphasize the importance of the performance of cladding and component. So this is the, the damage to airport terminal building in India 2014. Uh, but damage only on the only cladding system, but uh, inside building became like this and the uh, function of the building completely lost. Uh, 
and uh, this uh, terminal building could not be used for a long time. And the similar thing happened in Philippines uh, this, uh, due to Typhoon Haiyan, and uh, no damage to mainframes, only cladding damage. And when we see the windward side, uh, uh, the trigger of the damage uh, and, uh, was uh, the damage to the gra glass window uh, and the uh, crystallization happened uh, and the uh, entire roofing system uh, blown off. Uh, but inside the building became like this uh, and uh, only, only cladding damage, but the property inside uh, uh, completely uh, lost. Uh, and uh, business continuity planning could not be maintained. Uh, so the, this blow was given to the building owner. So we should uh, realize that the importance of cladding component design and extreme is speaking, in my opinion, the wind resistant design is almost equal to cladding and component design. A structure designer are interested in the frame, but uh, not so much interested in the comp uh, cladding and component design. So, and the majority of the building damage appeared on, on uh, roofing system or roofs. So uh, not, not only the cladding system, but also the main uh, frames uh, damage happened. So the, one of the reasons I, I guess uh, the gas loading factor method widely used in ma many countries, uh, also not only for tall building, but also for roofing system, long uh, span roof also. So, but uh, effect of the higher mode, uh, more significant. And also some partially or entirely the, the mean value become, can, can become uh, uh, very low. So the uh, equivalent static window the, based on the gas loading method uh, proportional to the mean uh, wind force. So uh, in such case, uh, uh, it is not so good, uh, not appropriate for estimation of the window. And next, uh, I've, uh, again, the emphasize the effect of the debris uh, and uh, it, it can induce a uh, damage chain. Uh, only single building or also multiple buildings. So this is an example of debris attack uh, and uh, so timber had penetrated uh, the wall. Uh, and this is a case of large scale structure. So external walls are damaged but the damage was not uh, limited to uh, uh, the facade, but also the inside completely uh, damaged and also the roof damage was in induced. So it can extend to the larger scale damage. Uh, so damage chain, one of the special features of wind induced damage, uh, different from seismic damage. And next, uh, this is a very uh, important point in my opinion. So in this lecture, so uh, I would like to uh, encourage you to reassess or reconsider the relation between design load level and lifetime of individual building uh, and elements, uh, including the temporal building. So uh, this is just Jap Jap Japanese example, uh, bad example in my opinion. So. Uh, mainframe, uh, we should consider 500 year recurrence window level, but uh, cladding component designed only 50 year recurrence window uh, obligated. Uh, uh, so the people believe, uh, seems to believe uh, design door level for cladding can be lower than design door level for frame. So some cases may be okay, but uh, uh, generally it cannot be uh, acceptable in my opinion. So temporary buildings, also the uh, including construction work office, uh, it is categorized in temporary building in Japan, and uh, we can reduce the design load or construction method. Uh, poor construction uh, can be allowed. Uh, so, uh, but uh, such a uh, damage can happen, uh, and uh, in this case, uh, construction engineers. And nine people were killed uh, due to due to damage to the construction works office. So the building code uh, for temporary building, uh, the similar in the world. Uh, the, this is the case in Japan. So reduction of a design load can be made for temporary building. And the ASC, um, the US, and also Australia, New Zealand, and the similar. 
So we can reduce the design load for temporary building, including a construction work office. So uh, they, they believe design load for temporary building can be uh, less than the general building. So, uh, but it, and also the scaffoldings are similar. So the damage are often happening as, as shown here, everywhere in the world. Uh, and also they, uh, some, uh, they induce uh, secondary damage and in some case uh, kill people. So um, the de design load for scaffolding is uh, much lower than the, the uh, construction work office. Uh, so in Japan, this is a case of Japan, uh, recommendation for safety uh, of scaffolding to wind. Uh, they uh, show the, some statistics uh, shown here. Average setting period at one construction site is almost uh, six months. So this, of course, this is true. Uh, then uh, they recommend the uh, one year recurrence level for the design wind speed uh, for scaffolding. The similar thing uh, also the UK, uh, I'm not quite uh, familiar, but uh, I just checked uh, and two year recurrence level and the uh, Chinese standard uh, much better, uh, the, but 10 year recurrence. So much lower design load can be up, uh, applied for scaffolding design. But is this reasonable? So this is my question to all of you. <laughs> and uh, so my answer uh, is uh, no, uh, not necessarily correct uh, because uh, this is my uh, kind of uh, consideration. So the average existing period of a specific uh, scaffold at an individual site is short. So it is uh, only six months. This is true. However, Please see this uh, uh, schematic uh, uh, image. Uh, this is, uh, the, please assume this is a, a city area and the green plot indicates the location of scaffolding or construction work office. And the white uh, uh, plot indicates the location of general building. So if you take such a snapshot uh, and then the one, six months later, if you take a similar snapshot, change to, uh, to, to the different position, green plot move to the others. And of course, uh, simultaneously the white plot also small, uh, slightly changed, of course. Uh, and the next six months uh, changing, uh, so, so image are also changing and uh, the green plot moving, but always existing. So, um, so construction sites are moving but the number of construction sites remain almost constant if uh, we can assume a uh, steady state the economic situation. So uh, if a strong cyclone strikes this city, all general building and construction work office and scaffold uh, would uh, experience the same level of wind loads. Uh, so uh, both in terms of uh, existing period or external actions, uh, there is no difference between permanent building and temporary building. Per, uh, temporary building moving, but always like existing. So um, it is similar to rental car. So average rental period of my individual rental car was assumed to be uh, 1.5 days, but we cannot design uh, the car based on such a uh, short length of individual use. And the similar thing, uh, so this is of course clear, clearly no, but uh, some parts or boats of airplane uh, periodically are replaced uh, because of the maintenance. So, but you cannot design uh, parts or, or boats uh, weaker than the main body. So, it is, so such an example show us uh, the clear answer, uh, of course not. Uh, uh, but for scaffolding construction work, similar for me, <laughs> but uh, the different treatment uh, have been made. Uh, so essentially, considering such an uh, rental car and so forth, uh, there is no re essential relation between design load level and the length of individual use. So uh, design load level should be decide decided based on importance or impacts of the damage on structure uh, society. So it should not be decided based on simply uh, length of uh, lifetime or length of individual use. So uh, temporary also, and uh, I would like to emphasize, temporary building not necessarily be less important building. 
So probability is, of course, one of the key issues, but it's not uh, everything. And especially definition of length of use should be uh, reconsidered, in my opinion. And uh, when we see such a uh, snapshot, uh, so if you consider the building design method focusing on the group or assemblage of uh, unspecified building, probably different uh, principle uh, may appear, uh, may be uh, embedded or uh, created, uh, in my opinion. So uh, especially code or standards should consider this aspect. Otherwise, we cannot stop such an uh, damage to the temporary building. The structures are designed under the assumption that they will be controlled or maintained uh, for strong wind. There are many, uh, like movable roofs or freight uh, handling facilities or cranes and driving range and uh, net supporting structure. But they forget about uh, the, the, uh, such an uh, assumption, uh, basically, and often uh, such a damage can happen. So uh, uh, strict uh, operation manuals uh, necessary and uh, strictly we should follow uh, such an manuals. And design and construction principle of disaster prevention bases or evacuation facilities, high risk facilities, high priority facilities should be clearly uh, uh, discussed. Uh, and especially in my opinion, the when we see the uh, make uh, post disaster investigation, the local government office uh, is almost quality of the building is similar to general building or low, some cases lower than the general building. Uh, but this kind of uh, building uh, becomes a disaster prevention basis once disaster happened. So the importance of the Sochanko local government office is much higher than we expect. Uh, and also uh, similar to higher station as hospital and so forth. And uh, recently the data center or such a special uh, facility also becoming uh, more and more important. And this is a one example of the high disk or highly influential uh, structure, the nuclear power plant. Uh, so uh, in 2011, uh, two uh, nuclear power plants uh, made a temporary shutdown due to tornado. Uh, but of course, uh, the reason of the external power lines uh, stopped uh, because of the tornado attack. But uh, backup generators uh, operated uh, uh, and no accident happened, of course. But the scenario up to here is the same as Fukushima nuclear power plant. And uh, in case of Fukushima, uh, backup generators were uh, killed by tsunami. 30 minutes later or 40 minutes later. So we should be careful about uh, the, also the backup generators in case of tornado. So tornado, multiple tornado can happen. So uh, we should be careful about uh, the design of backup generator also. So increasing demand, and I also, I'd like to emphasize the, the importance of electricity. Uh, so this is a recent uh, example of the power transmission towers collapse of power transmission towers in near Tokyo area, 2019. <clears throat> so because of the, the damage, uh, the, the power supply uh, completely stopped the uh, surrounding area, wide area for a long time. So very difficult situation happened. In the past, uh, the, because uh, the, the, no, nobody is living in uh, such a structure and even collapse happened uh, uh, such a mountainous area, no, no, not so many people are living. So uh, impact to the society was not so strong. So uh, design load level can be uh, minimized uh, as possible as they can for the economic, economic reason, because wide range, they should uh, distribute such a structure. However, the, the recently the importance of electricity, electric power is much, much, uh, becoming higher. And uh, without electricity, we cannot do anything. Even water, we cannot drink. So uh, such a situation that we should reconsider the uh, design principle for electric power infrastructure. Uh, so of course, there are many uh, different facilities and the difference in importance uh, we should consider. But for, uh, I would like to emphasize the importance of power transmission line design, uh, substation, 
the, the considering the uh, high uh, demand uh, for the uh, electric power. And also for to design such a structure and so forth, so we should consider the uh, in engineering modeling or risk modeling or not only uh, synoptic wind or tropical cyclone, but also tornado or dampers. So such an uh, accurate modeling may be uh, required. So I will not talk about, but Chris may talk about uh, related to this uh, problem. And uh, uh, I just only showed the tornado, uh, the result of the tornado risk modeling uh, or engineer, engineering model of tornado in Japan. That we propose uh, uh, tornado wind based on such a study, uh, mo engineering modeling of tornado and also the risk modeling, considering minus power seven concept. Uh, but the government uh, maybe a little bit reduced uh, the wind, uh, wind speed and so forth, but anyway. And the CFD and the remote sensing technology are recently uh, uh, significantly developed. And uh, so this is an example of the wind simulation in urban area, uh, simulating uh, simulated uh, the typhoon wind. Uh, uh, and this was uh, made by Professor Takemi from uh, Kyoto University. Uh, so such a study is very uh, useful in the future uh, for the prediction of local wind speed for warning system or rescue activities. And for rescue activities, uh, satellite uh, image uh, assisted uh, damage detection also very useful and we should uh, study more about this. Uh, and also 3D uh, sensing technology, including unmanned aircraft, radar serving machine and so forth. Uh, so uh, we should uh, uh, make the most uh, using uh, these uh, technology. And next, uh, let's move to uh, the future. Uh, so this is the, this is the total amount of uh, economic losses by all natural disasters uh, for uh, various countries. And the top three, uh, the US and China and Japan, the China, Japan, the Asian country also included in the economic loss also. And uh, we should note that the hotspot of uh, economic losses uh, in developed country. Uh, so in developing country and developed, con developed country, we, uh, the uh, disaster risk reduction is a most important high priority uh, issue. And the future, uh, we do not know. The future is a mystery. Uh, nobody knows the future, but uh, uh, this is the trend, uh, increasing trend of uh, sea surface temperature. Uh, and uh, proportional to that, uh, the, uh, the upper figure shows the number of disasters uh, and uh, green indicates wind disaster and uh, blue indicates water disasters. As we already observed, uh, these two can happen simultaneously in case of tropical cyclone. So, uh, the, so such a tendency is clear and also uh, accompany the economic losses also increasing significantly. So uh, the global warming or climate change, uh, uh, it is hypothesized that the increase in strong tropical cyclone uh, and strong tornadoes uh, and uh, we should stop repetition of uh, wind related disasters. And uh, in, in this uh, uh, presentation, the wind related means uh, uh, wind and water, though they, they can happen uh, during strong uh, cyclone, hurricane, uh, typhoon. So um, to stop this, uh, we, uh, we should uh, have uh, accurate evaluation of wind resistant performance of buildings and structure especially the performance of cladding and component, very important. Uh, and uh, we should chase the fracture process, uh, but uh, calculation and analysis are not so useful uh, and the uh, scale model cannot be used. Uh, so the full scale storm simulator may be necessary. Uh, and the design created uh, composed of two, two, two comp components. So load and the resistance are compared or action and performance. 
And in the, in the past, uh, the majority of engineers are so much interested in the accurate estimation of uh, uh, wind load or wind actions. Uh, so uh, we need to, uh, more research attention should be given to uh, performance estimation. Uh, so for that, uh, the large scale and full scale test facilities are necessary. And uh, in the North American region, uh, there are already uh, many people interested in uh, such a large scale or full scale uh, test facilities. And uh, these are the uh, large scale or full scale uh, wind tunnel facility, CSTB, IBHS, uh, Bore of Wind, uh, Windy Dome. Windy Dome is just, just a large scale, but uh, uh, also in Japan, the full scale storm simulator proposal and uh, University of Oklahoma uh, NEST project uh, uh, from uh, meteorological side and uh, FIU uh, full, full scale 200 mile power wind water testing facility. So these are uh, the, the three are the proposal, but uh, I, I believe uh, we, we need to uh, establish such a uh, storm simulator, especially in Asian region and nothing in Asian region. And, uh, but uh, economically and uh, also human uh, losses also very uh, uh, high in Asian region. So uh, we should establish such a full scale simulator by, by, with the international collaboration. So not only the building and standard uh, uh, structures, but also uh, we, uh, there are demand uh, for the uh, automatic uh, driving technology or M and aircraft in the very uh, severe meteorological situation uh, strong wind and uh, snow, uh, strong wind and rain. And so such a condition, the automatic driving system should uh, uh, perform. And this is an example of the uh, proposal by uh, UN Habitat. Uh, so uh, they uh, recommend bracing and proper joints, but honestly speaking, nobody knows uh, the efficiency or real performance of this kind of advice. Uh, without uh, a full scale storm simulator. So necessity of full scale simulator uh, could be uh, probably understood. And so uh, from load estimation uh, to performance est estimation and from model scale to full scale. Uh, so for that, the international consent concerted action are necessary uh, to, uh, for the knowledge dissemination and the cooperation with local government, uh, cooperation with uh, uh, academic organization, NGO, NPO, or UN organization. So one of the platform uh, possible uh, available is the International Group for Wind Related Disaster Risk Reduction. This is the thematic group uh, established under the U United Nations Office of Disaster Risk Reduction, the first, uh, former UNISDR. So now uh, the, the future, the global average temperature you're clearly increasing and the currently uh, already uh, plus 1.2 degree increase uh, had made uh, comparing to the before industrial revolution. Uh, and it is uh, hypothesized to increase up to 1.5 degree uh, in 2030, 10 years later. And uh, in such a 1.5 degree uh, scenario seems to be a very uh, critical uh, according to Dr. Lockstrom, uh, and he says a critical point for planetary boundary. Uh, he, he named the hothouse Earth. So that is a situation, the uncontrollable uh, condition can happen uh, in terms of the temperature increase uh, due to the domino effect, uh, uh, kind of domino effect of temperature increase. So I, I'm not sure, so this is true or not, uh, but uh, anyway, we should prepare for the future and the future should not be a mystery and the future should be a gift to our children. So this is the slogan, the UN slogan, the invest today, save tomorrow. Okay, thank you very much.